Okay, I think I'm back. I may or may not have pressed the wrong button. So, whoops. Uh, okay, so I think the stream started over. So hopefully it works out. Um, so hi, everybody. Um, I'm back on YouTube. Sorry, it's been a while. And to ease back into it, I thought I would do another live stream and unbox something that I ordered a couple of months ago that arrived this morning. And that is the Prusa i3 Mark III S 3D printer. Um, now, I've 3D printed in the past. I actually had the Prusa i3 Mark II S, um, but unfortunately it broke back in April. And, and since I couldn't get the parts in time, I figured I'll just order a new one. There have been some really cool advancements in the technology, and there are some benefits to having a 3D printer in the studio. Um, now, a lot of people think 3D printing is either really obscure or complicated, or it's just used to make tchotchkes. And um, yeah, I've been guilty of making random things with it as well. Um, but there are a couple of cool purposes and use cases of having a 3D printer. Um, so for example, this shape here is a geometric solid that I designed and printed myself and then painted and then used it as a, a prop in a photo. So let's see. So on my website, in my experiment section, you'll see kind of this object that I used to test out my high-speed strobes and freeze water um, splashing in it. And that was a really cool concept and a prop that I didn't have to go shopping for. It was an idea that I had in my mind and then I made it. Um, and I've used other 3D printed shapes in this series as well. Um, this one's a hypercube that I 3D printed as well. And um, it's actually fairly popular on Thingiverse, which is a place where you can get models. Um, so other reasons to get, let's see, other reasons to kind of get a 3D printer is making something um, customized or helpful that buying it, it doesn't always work out. So one example is storage. Um, so this over here is just a 3D printed SD card rack. Um, here we go, let's take a closer look. Hopefully the autofocus is working again. Uh, maybe, maybe not. I've been having issues. Okay, try one thing. Classic, turn it off and on again. Let's see. Nope. Not wanting to focus. Strange. Well, that's a shame. Um, any case, this is a 3D printed SD card holder. Um, I found the model in Thingiverse. It's just a couple of slots and pop it in, put it on a shelf. Um, I kind of just have a lot of different cameras going at certain times, so it's just easy to have anything that's available for a card just in this little storage. And when I need a card, take it out and pop it in. Easy as that. Um, another thing that I used the 3D printer for is to create some tools. So um, this over here is essentially uh, one of the more complicated prints I've made. Um, this is a, a jack, essentially. So all I have to do, let's see if the top camera is working again. Nope. Come on. Maybe. Let's see. Let's try that again. Oh, it seems to be working. Great. Um, so this is a jack, and it's actually 3D printed all at once on the build platform. And the way it works is you set it down, and then you turn this lead screw. And as you turn it, it spreads apart. And this is great because you can adjust the height of something pretty gradually. And I've used this to align small lights or small props. Um, and 
it was just an easy thing to print because it was a model that I downloaded and sliced in the software. It printed just like this and it was ready to use. Um, and then another practical piece that I printed um, is this little guy and it doesn't look like much, but uh, it is a round, essentially disc. Uh, but the crucial part about it is that the inside is threaded. And I did this um, essentially as a solid plate for a baby pin mount. Now, I don't have uh, what I normally use it ready to show you because it's being used by both the top camera and front camera. Um, let me see if I can find another option. All right, so just as a, an example, uh, this is a 3 8 thread to a baby mount. I have one for a tripod ball plate that is, has more of like a, a flange for a ball head. Um, this essentially would screw onto that and create a small little platform. Actually works with this too. And this is something that I use all the time if I'm photographing a cylindrical object and I don't want uh, a table reflecting. Uh, I couldn't find just a 3 8 threaded round anywhere by any manufacturer with the exception of something from Manfrotto that cost $60. Um, but that was way overkill for what I wanted, which was just a level surface um, on a light stand. <laughs> Imagine my fingers a light stand. Um, so this is something that I also designed and 3D printed, and it's an example of practical usage of 3D printing and photography. So it's not just tchotchkes, although I have printed plenty of those. Um, they're in other places right now. Um, but I just wanted to show you kind of some use case scenarios where you can do pre-made tools, artistic things, um, storage, um, and actually useful tools that are impossible, if not hard to buy. Um, so that's kind of some use cases and ignore my phone for a second. So these are some of the things that I've printed in the past. Um, and for the future, let me actually just do auto, so it's not so drawing. So in the future, I also plan to make accessories for um, a tethering table, as well as my pegboard and creating some custom fit pegs. Um, but you'll see that in the future, I'm sure. Um, so without further ado, uh, let's kind of get to the unboxing. Um, oh, we've got a question. What mediums can you print with? Plastic extrusions, metals. Um, this printer is an FDM printer, uh, which essentially just prints filaments of plastic by melting them. Um, this particular model can do anything from the basic PLA to um, a more strong ABS, but uh, um, to even more powerful filaments like nylon. Um, they do make blended filaments that have things like wood mixed with plastic or metal mixed with plastic. Um, but printing with like metal, for example, it's usually using a different technique, um, like laser sintering, where they just melt the particles of metal together. Um, this just kind of takes a spool, melts it down, and glues it together as it moves around. Um, almost everything that I print is been with PLA because it's cheap, it's light, it's pretty durable. Um, but some of my more uh, newer prints I've been using a material called PETG. Um, PETG. Oh, there's another use case, branding, forgot about this. Um, PETG uh, is easy to print like PLA, um, but PLA is very brittle. It can snap very easily. Um, a more durable option used to be ABS, but it smells really bad. You have to have an enclosure and it's very finicky about having things printing stable. So PETG is a new material, which is also environmentally friendly, but it's actually not as brittle. So I can flex this around and it kind of bends and warps as I move it around. Um, when I printed this in PLA, any sort of flex on this and it would just shatter into a billion pieces. Um, I use these as kind of like name tags on luggage and bags when I go to set. Um, so it's important to pick the right material for the job. And in this case, PLA was just way too brittle um, and PETG works great. And um, let me give you a close up on this. If you haven't seen it in my videos before, 
Um, this one happens to be translucent, so it catches the light and it's red, so for me it's very on brand. Alrighty, so now that we kind of have all these gadgets out of the way, um, I want to show you the gigantic box that came in. And as a segue, let me switch over to the website while I grab the box. All right, so um, this is the website from Prusa Research, the company that makes the printer I got. Um, in my research, it is probably the most functioning printer uh, in terms of bang for your buck. Um, there are more advanced printers in terms of enclosures that cost a lot more. There are much cheaper printers that you can build yourself, um, but it takes a while to get it to a point where it works well. Um, okay, so here's some highlights. Removable bed. Uh, my previous version didn't have that. They have a new frame and it's a lot quieter. Um, and I hope that's true because the old one was quite loud. Um, so running it overnight was not an option. Um, there's some really cool features like power panic, which I originally was gonna buy a UPS for, but now it's not needed and a filament sensor in case the filament runs out um, as it's printing. And that's useful for at the end of a roll when you run out, you can kind of use it all up instead of having a bunch of leftover. Okay, so without further ado, here's the box. <laughs> and that's me behind it, hi. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's quite large. Um, and this is the full order that came from the Czech Republic, and I'm about to open it for the first time. I think from the top view, all you're gonna see is box, um, unless I zoom out a little bit and you'll see the mess that is my room uh, and in the studio. And uh, let's get this started. All right. So with my order, I ordered a couple of things actually, not just the printer. Um, and you will see them as I take them out. There we go. Ta-da! And my favorite thing in this, of course, is the pack of gummy bears. <laughs> it's a 3D printing essential from Joseph Prusa, which is hilarious, but every time you order a printer from them, it comes with gummy bears because, I don't know, it's his favorite candy or something. Um, so I'll enjoy that later. Thanks, Joseph. And let's dive right in and continue. We've got a congratulations, uh, some stickers. Um, this is Joseph Prusa. We may or may not look a little bit alike with the glasses and hat and beard. Um, and then we got our handbook and a test sheet which confirms that they printed and assembled this printer and everything's functioning. Um, they do make a kit option, which can save you some money, but I'm not really a pro on welding. So uh, I don't want to go that route and I'll just have them printed, uh, build it for me. And I did that with the first one as well. Um, zooming out a little bit, you'll see that they packaged some filament in here as well. Um, this is Prusament. Uh, Prusa is new to making their own filament um, since their printers are actually made by their printers. Um, so they have some expertise with that. So I ordered some Prusament um, to kind of save on shipping costs and get it all at once. We'll get to that in another video when I actually do some printing. And then here we have some more Prusament. Um, I got two different colors. And let's see, oh wow, okay. In here we've got, um, this is some even more filament. Um, this is actually the basic filament that it comes with. And this is the Prusa Silver. And the, the jack that you saw earlier was actually printed with the same material when I got the Mark IIS the first time. So I know it's a 
filament that works very well for prototyping and printing, and it's nice and simple. And last but not least, oh boy, it's really in there. We've got some accessories. So I'll double check what these are. Um, okay, looks like a lovely little memory card. Um, because the way this printer works is usually you load up the files onto the memory card and pop it in. Um, we've got pieces for a spool holder, which is great. And then we've got some cleaning tools. Oh, that's new. They now give you a spatula. They didn't uh, come with that before. And then we've got some lubricant, a glue stick. Now glue sticks um, are really used when you're printing with things like PL um, ABS so they can stick better. Since I use PETG or PLA, I rarely need this. And then we've got some more tools and some plugs. That's a cool assortment. I don't remember this much coming with it the first time. Uh, and that's a lot of spare screws. So hopefully I won't need them, uh, but it's nice to know that I have them in case something goes wrong. All right. Let's pack that up and see what else is inside. Now, I think there's actually supposed to be one more piece of filament, but I'm not seeing it yet. So let's open this up. And this part just comes straight out. Fantastic. And, ah, this is that extra piece of filament. This is by a different company called Filamentum, um, but they're also made in the Czech Republic, so I figured I'd get it all in one fell swoop. And what you see is pretty much the printer, fully assembled. Um, that's kind of the best option, in my opinion. And you can see it already actually has a print on the print bed um, because they do a test print with the real printer. And so let's just take this out and I will show you what it looks like. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna just put this aside and here we go. This is the printer. How's that? Oh boy. <laughs> Not a lot of room in here with a giant box. Um, I don't think there's anything else in here. Oh, um, there is actually. Um, this is a sheet with some extra print beds that I ordered um, because this can kind of, this print surface can be used up over time. So I wanted to make sure I have options. All right, so. that out of the way. And cool. So let's show you kind of a top-down view and I'll zoom back in to get a closer look. All right, so let me make sure I can see what we're doing. Okay, so I don't need the old print. I don't need the manual right now because um, I know how this works pretty much. Um, so let's just turn it around so you'll see what I see. And it's a little bit bright in here because I have my aperture kind of on blast. Um, but you can see this actually slid off, so that's not great, but I'll be able to get it out of the way. So the print bed is magnetic. This is actually a piece of steel. And this is great because the old version, if something was really, really stuck, um, it was stuck for good. So with this new version, I can actually lift it up and you can see the print. They did a sample that shows that it's extruding nice and clean and then multiple layers with the name Prusa, of course. I'll give you a little closer look. So that is technically this printer's first print. Um, the great thing about a flexible and removable bed is now to get rid of this, instead of pr 
prying at it with a spatula, all I have to do is bend. And you can see it separates right away. And bend the other way. And there we go. That is this printer's first print. And I'm gonna put this print back here. And voila, that is the print bed. Just the same. And then we have Prusa. So we know that the printer works. Um, we've got some zip ties holding everything in place. I'll clip those when I'm ready to calibrate and print. Um, but for now, that is just about it. Um, so that is unboxing the Prusa i3 Mark III. Um, they make this in a kit version, like I mentioned, where you can save a couple of hundred dollars if you have it pre-built, uh, or if you make it yourself instead of having it pre-built. Um, but I kind of like this option where it's just literally I took it out of the box. Uh, all I'm going to have to do is plug in the power cord into the power brick, and I should be ready to print. So any, uh, any questions? <laughs> Probably not. Um, there's only a couple of people watching. Um, but thanks for tuning in. I will get this fully set up and I'll record some videos about 3D printing in the future. And I just wanted to kind of show you what the unboxing process looked like. I may or may not splice in this footage later. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.